Yeah, we're busy, huh? <laughs> we'll take it. We'll take it. Okay, although yesterday started slow and then we got our ass. So I, I have a cool case from yesterday. Um, he dials his patient presents with back pain and it's the same back pain she's had now for months. Um, she already been to the emergency department back in July and had a CAT scan. Um, but the pain is persistent and hurting her. She's an obese lady, so very difficult to examine, but the pain is severe, you know, of course. Um, no fever, no chills, just persistent pain getting worse over time. She had been here a couple more visits in the past for other things, but she had had visits for back pain after that initial ER visit for back pain. So I, I, I kind of took the interest to kind of the adage in medicine, three strikes you're out, you know, let's try to figure this out. I went back and found the last cask and she had here, had some degenerative disc disease, some lumbar stenosis and some bulging, so I could have blow it up there and that's what it is. But it had some erosions of the bone that suggested doing an MRI. And I went back and found MRI orders, but then they had been canceled. And the reason it had been canceled is because patient with hemodialysis cannot have IV contrast for an MRI. But she could have had a non-contrast MRI, which wasn't done either. And at that point, I say, wait a second, if they were suspicious enough to order it, and they kind of didn't follow through, so let's just go ahead and get it done today. Again, yesterday wasn't too busy, started nice, MRI, we can get it done, right? So we get the MRI, and also get some blood work. So the white blood cell count was normal, she didn't have a fever, the ESR ended up being 78, so pretty elevated, and the CRP was 1.56. So also elevated. Uh, those are two blood tests that look at inflammation. Um, but CRP is kind of the newer test for inflammation and infection, and it's kind of predicted something's going on, but it's not specific to any one particular process. So we get the MRI, and the MRI ended up showing findings consistent with what we knew, the degenerative disc disease, the bulge, and everything else. But it also shows um, signal changes consistent with discitis. And discitis is a, a potentially a serious and, 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 and problematic disease. So what is discitis? Discitis is an inflammation of the disc. But it's the precursor and almost synonymous with vertebral osteomyelitis, actually bone infection, because the discs don't have blood supply. Um, and the blood, the, the, their nutrition actually comes from diffusion from the blood vessels that are around the disc. So for infection to get, there's usually from instrumentation, somebody who's had an epidural injection or a lumbar puncture, a procedure in the back. But most often, it's actually hematogenous spread, and most often from UTIs. Uh, so the common bugs are staph, but it also could be strep, it could be Klebsiella, E. coli from UTIs and things like that, or skin infections. Obviously, IV drug abusers are at risk, uh, people immunocompromised, so a hemodialysis patient, diabetic, relatively immunocompromised, they get IVs in and out a lot, so they're obviously at, at, a, at a risk. Only 10% of patients with discitis actually have an objective finding on exam, like swelling or redness around the side, so the side looks fine, they don't even have a fever, they don't even have a white count, and it's really a high degree of suspicion for this kind of diagnosis. Um, blood cultures, they must be done, and they must be done frequently, uh, because you're just trying to catch that hematogenous spread. Uh, but they're only possible about a third of the time. Um, once you decide to, they have osteomyelitis, they need treatment for six to eight weeks on IV parenteral medicine. You put on bed rest for two weeks, and your determinants that they're getting better are that the ESR is lowered by less, more than half. Um, that they no longer have pain on ambulation. If they still have pain on ambulation, you put them back on bed, you put them back. After the two weeks of bed rest, they need to be able to walk without pain, and then you put them on a brace for another two months. What you're trying to do with that is because that disc basically died, you're trying to allow the bones on top and bottom of it to fuse together by them not moving. So that's how that heals. Uh, it, um, Surgery, you know, we got to transfer these patients, at least here, to a place where they have back surgery or um, neurosurgery. Not that they're going to need surgery. They most often do not. It's completely medical treatment. But if they have a compression, if they have an epidural abscess, if they have neurological symptoms like um, decreased sensation, motor weakness, and things like that, that's when they need neurosurgical intervention. The one epidural abscess I had back in the old ER, 
is a guy who came with spontaneous back pain and he was like diaphoretic and hurting so much and his urine had nitrates and some bacteria so we admitted him as possible pile of you know the urine wasn't exactly positive for leukocytes and white cells but I remember mentioning to the admitting doctor, you know, this could be like a spine thing. You make sure you get an MRI. But they didn't follow up. They didn't get the MRI until the cultures of blood came up positive for staph. And then they said, wait a second, stuff's not in the urine. You know, so they went and do an MRI and found an epidural abscess like a day and a half later. Uh, the patient did well, but obviously there was a delayed diagnosis, which is puts them at risk for paralysis, weakness, and chronic morbidity. So this guy is keeping in mind.